Hi everyone. Today I wanted to discuss complications in foot and ankle surgery. Um, complications are a almost normal part of any surgical procedure and unfortunately no surgeon on this planet is exempt from it. Um, patients should always be aware that no procedure is a slam dunk and that there's always the possibility that things may not turn out the way uh, the surgeon or yourself um, was hoping for. So what are the complications in surgery, at least in foot and ankle surgery, uh, or even limb lengthening surgery, which is my um, other uh, passion and subspecialty? We can really uh, divide them into three main categories. You get the common complications, you get the unusual, uh, less common complications, and then you get the rare complications. Let's start with the more common complications. Um, by far, the most common is some issue with skin healing. Uh, this can be just a superficial uh, wound dehiscence or simply a, a wound that takes a little longer to heal. Uh, then you can get the superficial infections, uh, which typically heal well with uh, either local wound care or uh, some oral uh, antibiotics. Uh, nerve irritation uh, following surgery is also very common because any surgical procedure uh, determines uh, temporary inflammation uh, of the surgical area. And this chronic inflammation, uh, by chronic I mean uh, lasting more than just uh, a couple of days, uh, can definitely uh, irritate those nerves. And so patients may complain of tingling, numbness, some shooting pains, um, uh, pain at night, uh, also very uh, typical. These, um, this kind of uh, complication uh, usually uh, heals itself uh, once the swelling starts to uh, go away. In most cases, about uh, three or four months after surgery, uh, the vast majority of patients uh, start noticing that the nerve um, issues uh, have resolved. Uh, in other cases, you may want to add a nerve medication to help those uh, nerves calm down and heal a little faster. Uh, some nerve complications may some nerve complications may require medication um, and other types of treatments. Uh, for instance, uh, an injection in your uh, lower back to block that nerve uh, and allow it to also calm down and recover. Then you have uh, the possibility of needing unexpected further surgery. This could be because the um, alignment of the bones um, at your first post-operative visit or other subsequent visits doesn't look exactly uh, right and may differ from what it appeared to be during uh, the x-rays obtained while you were undergoing surgery. Um, and so this may require, again, a revision surgery. Other times, uh, you, the loss of alignment is, is not particularly concerning and so you don't have to do uh, really much about it and it may not even have a long-term impact on your uh, foot and quality of life uh, overall. Let's move on to the uh, less common uh, complications. Uh, these go from uh, having a deep uh, infection of the bone or the soft tissues below the skin. And this more frequently requires a combination of antibiotics and a washout in the operating room. Uh, you can get a recurrent infection. So you get an infection, it heals, and then it comes back. And this more typically requires um, surgery to really more aggressively debride uh, the infected uh, tissues in the foot and ankle. You can get an incomplete or partial correction of your original deformity. So for instance, if you came in for a bunion correction, the bunion may definitely look better than before, but it doesn't look 100% straight. Um, this is can arguably 
uh, be considered either uh, normal or a complication. It really depends on how your surgeon feels about it and how you feel about it as a uh, patient. You can get a fracture. Uh, so if you realign some bones and you fix those uh, realigned bones with uh, hardware, sometimes the hardware can break or the hardware can remain intact, but it breaks the bone around it. Sometimes this may need a revision surgery. Other times uh, we can just observe it and it can heal on its own without uh, any major consequence. You can have a delayed union or a non-union. That means that the bones that you're trying to heal are either taking a longer time uh, to heal, we're talking about more than three months, or may not heal at all. And this usually you uh, appreciate at about nine months after surgery. If you have a delayed union, many times you just have to sit back and wait for the bones to heal. Uh, if you have a non-union, this usually requires uh, surgery to correct it if it causes pain. If it doesn't cause pain, then uh, you not you don't necessarily have to do anything uh, about it. But again, it depends very much on your uh, underlying condition and the thoughts of the treating physician. Um, joint stiffness is also very common in orthopedic surgery after a surgical procedure. Uh, that is why we always try to tell patients to start moving the affected joint uh, as soon as possible in order to prevent stiffness. Uh, many times the stiffness is uh, temporary and it recovers over a period of about six months, but sometimes it can take up to a year really to uh, return to a uh, more normal uh, situation. Um, much more rarely the stiffness is permanent. Uh, in these cases, fortunately, it's a stiffness that doesn't really significantly impact your activities of daily living, uh, but it's certainly something that you will notice when you compare your two legs. Blood clots, uh, also a possibility in um, orthopedic uh, foot and ankle surgery. Uh, based on the literature, the risk of developing a blood clot is not as high as for other types of orthopedic subspecialties, such as hip and knee replacements or uh, spine surgery. Depending on certain risk factors and on the extent of the surgical procedure, uh, your surgeon may decide to put you on a, a blood thinner uh, to help prevent um, the blood clot. Uh, lower risk patients uh, may, for instance, go on uh, daily aspirin. Uh, higher risk patients may need either the um, belly injections uh, of heparin or other more modern medications that are taken uh, by mouth. There should also be some caution with uh, getting taking blood thinners because in certain patients it can lead to internal bleeding. So routinely putting every single patient on a blood thinner uh, is uh, controversial and not always recommended. And then we have the rare complications. Uh, these are really uh, permanent uh, nerve damage, permanent um, um, blood vessel uh, damage and uh, loss of limb and uh, unfortunately even death. The uh, nerve injury and the uh, injury of the artery um, of your leg is usually something that you know pretty early on, um, within uh, sometimes minutes or hours after surgery, other times uh, within about uh, a few weeks. So that's something that's recognized uh, very early. In certain situations, these things can be um, fixed by another surgery. In other cases, they're permanent, and that may result in a uh, loss of uh, function of that part of the leg. Uh, the loss of the limb is also a possibility, uh, very rare, but it can certainly happen. Uh, typically, they, they tend to happen more in higher risk patients, uh, especially patients that have diabetes, patients that have uh, a peripheral uh, vasculopathy, 
or peripheral neuropathy. Um, and then certainly in patients that develop very severe um, infections that fail uh, treatments with antibiotics or washouts. Death uh, also extremely rare, uh, at least as, as far as uh, my subspecialties are concerned. Um, the more frequent type of um, cause of death is secondary to a blood clot, which then moves from your leg into your lungs. It's called a pulmonary embolism. Um, again, thank God it's uh, very, very rare, uh, but it is a possibility. So these are just some of the uh, complications. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's impossible to list every single one of them, uh, but I, I wanted to try to give you a, a broad idea of what to look out for. One thing that I really also want to uh, stress is that as natural it is, as it is for uh, a patient to uh, blame uh, his or her physician for developing the complication, uh, most of the times these complications appear to be almost inevitable. So not really uh, related to the skills of the technique of the doctor, uh, but rather to the uh, variability in anatomy and biology and physiology um, among um, human beings. And so, you know, you'll find surgeons that do hundreds of the same procedure every year. And for some reason, 95 out of, out of 100 do fantastic and the other 5 out of 100 develop a complication, even though he or she use the same technique, the same instruments, the same hands. Um, so as, again, as natural as it is to to start thinking, oh, maybe he or she did something wrong, uh, do also try to keep in mind that it is um, a normal, uh, if you want, part of uh, surgery. The only way not to have a complication is to not have surgery. Um, so in orthopedics especially, the vast majority of the procedures are elective. Uh, so you're not going to die necessarily from not having an orthopedic procedure. Um, it's more of an impact on quality of life. And so you need to weigh the pros and cons of uh, undergoing surgery. And one last word of advice, uh, never trust a physician that tells you that there is no complications uh, with his or her surgery and that there's a hundred percent success rate because that is unheard of and it's just impossible and so I would be very skeptical of anyone that would tell me um, that everything's gonna be just fine and no risks involved. Take care.